The waiting lines template is just an awesome tool for calculating the key metrics or performance measures related to the waiting line systems. It's a very useful device for bringing together the Poisson distributed customers along with the exponential distributed service times and seeing how they relate to each other. So the basic parameters, which is what we see in the, the top left, are the same as the basic parameters for the Poisson and the exponential models, respectively. So we have the arrival rate, we have the service rate. Notice how they're in numbers per uh, some time period. We have the number of servers and the time unit. This is just there for sort of aesthetic purposes. You may see at the very top the MMS, that just means it's an infinite population system. Markov, Markov, and then the number of servers if you want to get too crazy. So Markov, Markov distribution for the arrival rates, technically a Markov distribution for the service times, and then S is the number of servers themselves. Okay, but not really super important. Uh, utilization, that's just lambda divided by mu. Probability uh, of zero, nobody in the system. We have LQ, L, WQ, W, all the key metrics related to waiting lines. And then we have the state probabilities. Those are those Poisson-like probabilities. So the number of people or number of things in the system and the, ex the probability that you have exactly that number in the system. Okay. Uh, these are... Relate, these are potentially, you can have an infinite number of people in the system, which is, explains why sometimes it doesn't always add up to 100%, because it may take quite a few numbers in the system so that Excel rounds it up to 100%. Okay. So let's look at our example. We have customers arrive at a checkout counter at an average of 20 per hour. So that's their arrivals. So it's 20 per hour. Very first key Poisson metric is the arrival rate of 20 per hour. They are served at an average rate of 25 per hour. So 25 uh, is the service rate. The next key metric we need to keep track of is uh, number of servers. So they arrive at a checkout counter. So it means the number of servers is one. So look at that. Everything has been, all the key metrics have been calculated. Okay. So now our task is that since we've identified all the key parameters for these two models or for this waiting lines system model, we now just need to know what each thing refers to. Okay. So we think of LQ 3.2 is the average number in the line. Yes, I know you can't have 0.2 of a person, but this is an average. This means that sometimes maybe it's three, uh, then a few times it's four, then a couple times it's two, and so on. Okay, so it's okay. The average is an integer. It's an average. It's not saying that 3.2 people are ever actually in the lineup. L is the number in the system. So on average, we expect four people to be in the system, both in the line and receiving the service. Average waiting time in the line, 0.16 hours, which you can then easily convert to minutes so that it's you know, somewhat conversational. And W is the total time in the system. It looks like about a fifth of an hour, right? So about 12 minutes total time in the system. 80% of the time a customer waits, which means 20% of the time it's empty. Right? And we can see the probability that there are no people in the system is 20%. The probability that there's exactly one person in the system is approximately 16%. The probability is exactly two people in the system is 13%. Probability that there's exactly three people in the system is 10% and so on. Okay. So when we, that, when we talk about operating characteristics of the system, we're really focusing in on those basic performance measures. So given, so the second part of our question, for the above service rate, what is the probability of having at least four customers in the system, okay? So this one 
is uh, is still going to be it's going to be a calculation. Now there is a temptation of saying, okay, at least four. I mean that's four or greater, and that's just to take these numbers here of four and higher and add them up. Uh, not quite right, right? Because again, we see that those only add up to ninety nine percent. Really, what this is asking for is the sum of all the probabilities of three and under, and then take the complement of that. So one minus the three and unders. Okay, that means that's where there's four or more, at least four, so four or more. So 41% uh, of the time, there's four or more people in the system. Next thing, what is the average service rate required to have customers average only 10 minutes in the system? Okay, so average service rate. So we're looking for this number here and we're targeting uh, the waiting time to be 10 minutes. Now we could, we could do this a couple of ways. Since it's a one server system, we could solve for W, uh, w, not WQ, uh, W, right? Because the waiting required to have cost server, average service rate required to have customers average only 10 minutes in the system. The system just means old fashioned W. Okay? We could easily set W, use the formulas and find out what the, the appropriate mu would be, okay? So asking us for a service rate. We could also do a little bit with the waiting line template do a little quick and dirty kind of way to do this because it's, it's kind of easier. We take that W number, we times it by 60 to get minutes and see what we're looking at. Okay, so we see that the answer is about 12, 12 minutes right now. Okay, so I want it to be a little less than 12 minutes, which means in order for that to happen, given the arrival rate, I need to be able to serve more people in an hour, right? If, if the person, we remember from Little's Law, if, if, if the... Uh, if the amount of time or W goes down, that's directly linked to how, how quickly you can deal with things. Okay, so let's try. We can just try random numbers. 25 doesn't work. 26. Okay, so I punch in 26. I push enter, and I see that takes me down to the, about the 10 minutes, right? And I could have done that for 25, 26. It takes a blink of an eye in order to deal with that. So that's relatively non-painful right and i see that okay the service rate would have to be 26 for me to for the customers to average only 10 minutes in the system the key component here is to understand that 10 minutes in the system is w okay so that's not so bad next step in this process let's bring costs into the calculation so at a large repair facility mechanics have to make frequent trips to the tool crib for parts and specialized equipment arrivals are infinite so it means we're on the appropriate worksheet here. Uh, and since mechanics can come as often as needed, even though the populace are finite. Okay. Records indicate that mechanics go to the tool crib an average of 18 per hour. Okay. So that's 18 per hour. That's their, their arriving. Attendant is capable of serving 20 per hour. Okay. An attendant. Okay. So 20 per hour is our service rate. An attendant means our server number of servers is indeed one. If mechanics are paid $30 per hour and the tool crib attendants are made paid $12 an hour, would it be more cost effective to have one or two attendants it in, uh, in the tool crib? Okay, so here we need to start thinking about some things, right? We have certain key uh, evaluate things we're going to value. So first of all, we want to know how many number of servers, right? We want to, we're deciding on be more cost effective, i.e. lower cost, to have one server or two servers, right? But we have a cost to those servers, right? So we have a server, a cost, and we can keep that in mind. We also have a customer cost, right? Right, and now, and so I'm just gonna leave a space here, we'll talk about that, and we have a waiting cost.
Now, it's not one component of cost we're interested in. We're interested in the total cost, right? Because we're going to balance these all off. But at the end of all this process, what we care about is server cost. Now, that missing gap. Why, why did I leave that missing? Well, server cost. Okay, fine. Waiting cost. So I know how many servers I have. I have one or two servers. But I don't know how many people are waiting. Right? And now we read the detailed questions. Okay, so mechanics are paid $30 per hour. And the crib of tool equipment make $12. So $30 per hour, that's telling me how much per hour uh, it, it costs me to wait. Now, the temptation is to think that W or WQ is what's important. And that's not the case at all. What's really important is number in the line, number in the system. We pay mechanics in the system. I don't care which mechanic, whether it's Mary the mechanic, Bob the mechanic, Sue the mechanic. I don't give a crap which mechanic we're talking about. All I care about is if there's a mechanic in the line, I'm paying his or her time. So I'm most interested in number of those mechanics that are waiting. What's my server cost? Okay. So I have my server cost, which is my tool crib attendant equals to the $12 times by the number of attendants. Their number of servers. And I just copy that down. And so I'm either paying $12 an hour, or $24 an hour. <clears throat> L will determine that in a sec here. Okay, waiting cost. Well, that's going to equal to $30 for each mechanic that's waiting times by the number of mechanics that are waiting, right? Even though it's $30 per hour, it's not how much I pay an individual mechanic. It's how much I pay mechanics in general. I don't, I don't, again, I don't care how long a given mechanic waits in there. I care about how many mechanics are in the line because I'm paying $30 an hour for the average number of mechanics in the line. And I push enter. It's zero because I don't know what L is yet. Copy that down as per normal. My costs, well, what's my cost equal? It equals to my server cost plus my waiting cost. And I copy that down as well. So what's missing is my L. So I need to calculate my L's. How many people in the line in each one of those two scenarios? First time, I run the L, and I see I got nine people in the line. Servers one, nine. Whoosh, instantly got all my costs. Now I add a second server. All I have to do, all I have to push in a two. Two servers, saboom. Now I have one point. One, two, eight, five in the line. <clears throat> okay. And I see that adding the, the extra server increases my server cost, decreases my waiting cost quite a bit, and my total cost is about $57.86, far less than the $282 I was paying before. Yes, it is indeed more cost effective to have two attendants than one attendant. Key takeaway from this, is we're really zooming in on L or LQ, depending on what we pay our mechanics to do. In some cases, you're only paid to wait, and then you'd be focused on LQ. Here, no such uh, restriction. Stay away from W and WQ. We do not care how much we pay a particular mechanic. We only care about how much we pay mechanics. All right, that's it for this little tutorial.